All right, folks, we got something special for you, a little segment of our Pistol 3 class. If you want more of our classes, check out WPSN. We've uploaded some of our classes and more are to come, so check down below. And make sure you stay tuned after this video. At the very end, you'll see a little bit of a teaser of our classes. But first, before we jump in, we'd like to thank Surefire for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out Surefire, they are an age-old name of reliability and awesomeness for flashlights. But what I love most about Surefire is probably their their Warcomp flash hider, which reduces muzzle rise and eliminates a lot of the muzzle flash, and it witnesses with their cool guy suppressor. So make sure you check out Surefire. Thanks again for sponsoring the video. And without further ado, it's time to jump in for some cool shooting awesomeness. Here we go. With two-handed shooting, typically I want you to be able to do it at any kind of distance, but one-handed specifically, I think it's a martial arts thing and it's really coming out and shooting retention and it's really up close and personal. So my one-handed stuff is war weapon manipulation heavy for you folks, because I think that's more of your real world context. Prepare for everything, but you don't have infinite time to practice everything. You have to pick and choose what you think is the most important thing to practice and then drive ahead. Copy? So one-handed shooting, is important. Great. Uh, what I want to go over right now is a pretty goofy way that I'm trying to manage recoil shooting one-handed. It lets you shoot a little bit quicker. First off, what I want you to do is kind of uh, come over my right shoulder and I'm going to just hold my gun up a few different ways and I want you to watch what my gun does. Got it? I want you to watch the recoil path of the gun. So you're not really worried as much about the rounds. You're just saying, what's the gun doing when you shoot it? Got it? So I'm gonna try a few different things and then I'm gonna try something pretty darn crazy. You won't like it, but the question is, is does it work? And if it works, then uh, it's not so bad. And it has to do with just weird counter pressures. So uh, cool, we'll go ahead and do that now. So uh, get where you can see my gun. This first one, I'm just gonna naturally stick it out and pull the trigger and see what the gun does. And then I'm gonna ask you what you thought. All right, here we go. All right, what's the gun doing? Going up, right and right and left. Left. up and left, and is it coming right back on target, or does it go up, hang time, slow, 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 stop? Second. It's the second one, isn't it? It goes up, kind of uh, up and left. Does it do the exact same path each time, or kind of close, or? Kind of close, kind of close, not exactly. It's a different path that it's coming up, up and left, against where my arm is, up and left, and then it's a slow, easy descent on target, then a stop, and then a go as well. There's some people who like to put a thumb up here, turn it sideways just a little bit as well. Have y'all seen that? I'm gonna try that and see what that does. All right, what's the gun doing now? It went even further left. Okay, did it recover in the exact same spot? Did it recover faster or slower, about the same? Maybe a little faster? which is interesting, that's cool. It's kind of pulling down. If, I, I think that's a better win than just straight up and down like this. Now what I'm gonna do is pretty something pretty darn goofy. Uh, and this is uh, a competitive shooter, Todd Kennedy taught me this, pretty cool. Good good dude, by the way. So I'm not advocating for one style or the I don't care what you do. I'm gonna show you a few different ones and I'm gonna let you guys just try it out, see what you like most. And these are the things that I see that are out there and all of them kind of work, but not all work as well. But I want you to just play with them, piddle with them, and let's just see what we can see and do what we can do. But this one's weird. It's a lock this way and then the wrist tackles back. And the idea is, is yeah, kind of have your joints locked at extremity so that when the gun jumps and jump it will, it will move, it recovers faster and more consistently to the same spot so that you can shoot a little quicker. Got it? So let's just see the path of the gun uh, for uh, this one. Here we go. Basically, I'm coming out like this and then just attacking my wrist up uh, like that. What do you think? Better. Definitely yeah, and I mean, like, look, look, I'm shooting. I'm shooting a pretty good group right there. That You saw those were tighter rounds too, weren't they? I was able to keep my gun a little steadier and shoot rounds a little bit quicker too. If my gun went up and moved, but it was much faster down and it stopped 
of like, I liked way better. It felt much better to me. I like this one. It's super goofy. It's like you come out like this, like you're holding the gun sideways and then only moving your wrist like this. Also, something I don't like is when somebody uh, super extends their arm out like this because now it's jumping out like this. I like it kind of closer in so that my, uh, just like my normal shooting position, here, th this is my normal shooting position uh, right here. And imagine I just did this. That's it. So here's my position. And basically I just drop this and kind of squeeze it in right there just a little bit more. Uh, and then you notice when I remove this hand and I got these pressures, it kind of naturally falls over. So it's already in position. And all I have to do is bring my wrist up and kind of lock it like that. Pretty groovy. Now, when you shoot, you might suck and you're just not shooting well. And you'll be like, what the crap, man, I'm a good shooter. Yes, you are. But it's just a whole, this is one way that you'll shoot and get good. And as soon as this hand disappears, everything just kind of changes. And it's almost like you have to relearn how to pull the trigger. And it's really more about isolating that trigger. The gun's going to be moving too, which makes your shot anticipation stuff go up. Not fun. Uh, and then you just got to basically be able to isolate that trigger and keep it moving, keep it moving. And then you got to off and on reset your trigger too, which is much harder. On my very first two shots that I took on this target, I didn't reset my trigger. Did y'all hear those clicks? And if you're not resetting your trigger, you're going to be a disaster. A disaster. Even if you're managing recoil well and it's back on target, uh, just as you go one-handed, it's a lot easier to impart movement to the gun. You're shaking already and going all the way out and then back in. It's just trash. Off and on. Stop. Easy. Copy. Today we're going to be learning about all kinds of fundamentals of fire. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. It's going to be safe. We're going to learn a lot about defending ourselves. This is how violence happens. Me to you. If you ever get in a gunfight, you're going to have to move from a position of readiness to on target. Draw strokes. I've cleared thousands of rooms, real world and combat zones overseas. I'm going to jump into class with these guys and you guys are coming too.